Okay, again, I made it to the uh, spot right before the end and you'll chain three and then again, you'll want to go on the top here and slip stitch. So you're going to turn your piece and then that single crochet, the very first single crochet of the row where you ended your, your uh, row on the strip, you're going to slip stitch there. So you have your last on this side and it's going to be the same for each. Then you're going to do what you do on the end. Let me grab some of my yarn because it seems to want to run away from me. Again, on the ends here, you'll want to chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Skip two and then the third. Slip stitch. Then chain five again. Three, four, five. And move on over here. You'll skip three and then this very last stitch of the row. You'll slip stitch in that and then you'll chain three to finish your last little stitch on this side that you've done for every corner so far and you will slip stitch in this beginning you can do inside the stitch but inside the space because you're going to go start your next row in that space anyway so I just went ahead and slip stitched into that first chain three space. So now you have your last loop here. If you want it to be a little neater, then you can go, which is what I also did is here where you attached it, just go right into there and slip stitch. Then you have more of a, a single stitch place. And then you can slip stitch into your first chain three area and then you'll start your next round. Now for this round it's going to be the same whether you're using thicker or thinner yarn so you want to chain three. Let me just make sure it's a chain three. I don't want to tell you something different than what's on the pattern. Yes, chain three. And then you'll double crochet two more times in this same chain three space. That chain three will count as a double crochet. You want to have three stitches in each chain three space. So then you're going to move over to the next chain three space and you're going to work three double crochets inside that space. One, two, and three. And you're going to continue by putting three double crochets in all these side stitch stitches, all these side chain three spaces. So continue all the way down your strip, even to the very corner chain three space. Then that'll bring you to your two large uh, end sp spaces and I'll show you what you need to do okay. then. So you've gone all the way down your side and you've made it to the end, these two big old stitches here in the end, where we did a chain of five. And just keep in mind, just like we're chaining three here, you're doing three stitches. Now you did a chain of five here, so you're gonna do five stitches. One stitch for every chain. So just start putting your five double crochets worked in your chain of five. Two three, four, and five. And then just move on over here and do your five in the next chain five space. Three, four, oops, and five. And then you'll be right back here beginning your next side where you will repeat what you did on the other side. I'm going to put three double crochets in each of these side chain three spaces. Doing the same as you did here and when you get to these two end spaces here 
Again, you're going to do double crochet five, double crochet five in both of these spaces. And then don't forget right before you get to the very end where you'll slip stitch, don't forget on this side to put your three double crochets here. Okay, welcome back. I just did the, the three double crochets in this very corner space Oops, here. Don't forget to do those right after you do these end. You have one more set of three to do. And then you slip stitch in the top of the beginning chain three to end round uh, the first round, which I guess would be round two of the circle. Okay, so for round three, this is where it changes. Uh, well, I guess not on this row, it doesn't change yet. So for round three, it'll be the same for either if you're using thicker or thinner yarn, you will want to do a chain of four this round instead of a chain of three. And then you're going to be working in the spaces in between each set of three here. And you're going to be slip stitching in that space in between. So you'll find your first space in between your double crochets and you'll slip stitch. Then chain four, one, two, three, four. Find your next space in between your sets of three double crochets and then you will slip stitch. Then chain four again, one, two, three, four. Find your next large space in between your sets of three double crochet and slip stitch. And now you're going to create, you're creating this next space that you'll use for next round. This is kind of like a prep row. So continue your chain fours all the way around until you get to your end or top or bottom sections of your strip. Okay, I made it all the way to my end part. Slip stitched in the last space here. And now for your two end areas here, you chained seven last time. This time you're going to add two chains. So you're going, going to chain seven this time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then slip stitch in the space between. Chain seven again. One, two, three four, five, six, and seven. Then you will find your next space, which is here, and slip stitch there. Once you've got your two seven spaces here, you just continue what you are doing before. Chain four, and slip stitch in the next space. And you'll continue this all the way down. And then again, do your chain seven, chain seven. And then remember, you have your last chain three here. So after you chain seven, chain seven, and you slip stitch here, remember chain four one more time, and then you can slip stitch in the beginning attachment space here. Okay. I just got done and uh, slip stitched in between here. Remember, got your chain three, uh, your chain four space over this last set of three here on the end. Then I slip stitch in the space in between. And that's how you end the round. Now for round four, it slightly changes depending on uh, the size of your yarn that you're using. Like I said, if you're using a little on the thinner side yarn, you could probably get away with going ahead and doing a double crochet of three in the same. So what you'll do is you'll slip stitch in this first chain four space and you'll chain three. Then you'll put two double crochets in that same stitch. And then you will work your three double crochets in each stitch. And then again, you did a chain of seven here. So you'll do a double crochet of seven in it. And it'll be the same all the way around. And don't forget, uh, you'll have your space right after your two end, you'll do chain You'll do double crochet seven, double crochet seven. Don't forget that you still have your three double crochets to do here before you end your round by slip stitching in the top of the beginning chain three. 
Now, if you have thicker yarn, like I did when I was doing mine, at this point, mine was kind of, you know, um, ruffling up because it had like too much yarn. So I knew that this round I needed to fix it by kind of decreasing a bit. And to do your decreasing to flatten out your piece, if it's ruffling up on you, is you want to only do two double crochets in each stitch. So you'll slip stitch again in your beginning chain four space and you'll chain three, but you'll only do one double crochet in this stitch. And then you'll do two double crochets instead of three. You only do two worked in each of your chain four spaces, but the ends will still be the same. You'll still do the seven stitches on the end. And if you find that the ends are curling up a bit, you can add one or two stitches here, which will make it flatten out more. But I didn't really have so much of a problem with that. Um, you can adjust it on the very last round if it's really having a, a bit of a curl. So basically the ends are done the same no matter if you're using thicker or thinner yarn. I still used, I, I should say, I still did seven here. But I did for this round only two double crochets all the way around. So it's up to you whether you have thinner or thicker yarn or how your piece is going. If it's uh, ruffling up or not, if, I mean, if it's ruffling up, do only two double crochets in each of these chain four spaces. But if it's laying flat, then you want to, like this piece is, then you want to go ahead and continue to do your three just like you did last round or the, the round before last round and do three in each space. Three in each space and seven on the ends. Okay. Now that you've got your three all the way around, I, I would do recommend trying to do the three all the way around first to see if it's going to lay flat. I think I did my first piece a couple of times until I had the pattern, uh, until I learned my yarn uh, to see which way it uh, laid flat better. If it's, if you've done the row, the round, and it's you know, scrunching up like this or not laying flat at all, then rip it out. Go ahead and rip it out and do two in each one. Or even if, if, if it starts to pull a little bit, then maybe two is too little. So maybe trying to alternate it two, then three, then two, then three, then two, then three could be better for you for this round. But everybody crochets differently and the yarn also plays a part. So use this first strip to find out how your piece is going to lay and how it's going to look the best. And then make the alterna alterations as you need. Once you know on this first strip, then you just make all the other ones the same. You know, all the, all the queen size and all the king size. You just need to get this first strip down and learn uh, the best way to do it. Okay, so mine seems to lay flat using these uh, three, so that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it three all the way around. I don't need to make any alterations. So I'm going to slip stitch in the top of my chain three to end my round. Now for round five, you're going to chain four, one, two, three, four. And then again, I don't know why my camera is going out of focus again. You'll be slip stitching again in the spaces in between. You're going to be doing just like you did for round three. And you're going to do chain four, slip stitch. Then chain four, slip stitch in the pieces in between. You're preparing your, for your last round now when you get to the ends, the top and the ends here, this round you'll want to do a chain of nine. You're going to add two each time. So I did a, I did five, seven, and then this, this round here will be nine. So do your chain four all the way around and when you get here do a chain of nine, slip stitch in the middle, chain nine, slip stitch in the middle and then you continue your chain of fours all the way here and repeat for this side, chain nine, 
chain nine, and then don't forget this very last chain three here. You'll want to chain four and slip stitch in this beginning same stitch here where you began. Okay. Now, again, you want to go ahead and start this next row, uh, sorry, round. And uh, after you do it for a while, you'll know whether or not you need to back up and not do three in each one because you're going to be doing the same thing as you did before. Like I said, once you have learned your yarn and your strip and how it works, then you'll know what, how to adjust it every time. So first, slip stitch in the chain four, then chain three, and then do your two double crochets worked in your first chain four space. Then go ahead and do three double crochets in each stitch around. Now I have thicker yarn here for my larger afghan that I showed you and on this round I alternated. I did three, then two, then three, then two, then three. So I did three double crochets, two double crochets, three double crochets, two double crochets. And the previous row I did only two like I told you before. So you're going to have to, uh, you know, see what works for you. But the idea is hopefully that you can do three double crochets in this as well. And when I was telling you how much yarn it took to do each one, I used maybe a little less than two skeins, but I, I also didn't do three in all my stitches. Like I said, you know, I did two here, then I alternated on the last one. So you may need actually two full skeins. It's always best when, you're, when you have an afghan especially to buy more because you don't want to get you know, somewhere on your afghan and need more of that color and you don't, you don't have it. So always get more than you need. So you'll continue to put your three all the way around and as long as it's not bunching up, then you're good. You can stay with the three all the way around. If it's bunching up, then you have too many stitches and you need to reduce some way. You can try to put two in each or you can alternate like I did with my other blanket by putting three, then two, three, then two. But if you can keep with three all the way around, that, that's great. Now, when you get to the end, it's going to be the same like before. You're going to have five, then you had seven. Now you're going to be working nine in this chain of nine. And you'll do the same thing here on each side. You'll be putting nine stitches in each corner. Now, if it's starting to your flap to do this, then maybe you want to add more. Maybe you want to add, uh, you know, 11 or something like that. It's up to you. The more you add here, you can add more of a kind of a ruffle going on here, which also can make, could uh, add a nice little touch to your afghan. It's up to you. But the pattern uh, that I did, I did nine here. So continue all the way around, do your three or whatever adjustments that you need for your afghan and put nine in each and corner. When you get to the end, you will slip stitch in the top of the chain three. And then that'll be the end of your strip. And then once you, you've done that, I will show you how to sew these pieces together. The first piece that you, you do, obviously, you need to cut your yarn. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, you can just leave that whole skein there. If there's a little bit of your skein left, then maybe you can leave it attached and just use another skein to start your next strip. It's up to you because you can use this yarn here to sew the other piece together. Okay, These pieces aren't exactly the same size, but that's okay. It's going to be good enough for me to show you how I did the sewing process. What I did is, since you want the ridge to be like this on the good side showing, what you can do is just put wrong side to wrong side, having the right sides face out. And then this stitch that you have here, you can find on this side, which for me, I had to attach each one separately. And I think maybe it would be a good idea to go ahead and just cut your yarn because you're always going to start three down and you really need to start your sewing there. So I'm going to find my three after my my end here. You have your first set of three 
and this is your first set of three on this side. Now you can get your color. It can be the same color that you used all the way around, which is what I did. I used my same white. But you can add a little bit more color here too if you want. It is your blanket, your afghan. So I'm going to go in this first. Let me get a little closer here. I guess light still is there a little bit. Okay. I'm going to go in for, through the top stitch of my first three on this side. And then I'm going to find it's equal on this side of this afghan here and go into that one. Then you just want to do a single crochet. And then you want to keep it lined up as best you can, these three. So you have two more on the set of this three. So you'll go under, you can go under just the back loops if you want, or go under both of them to make a strong connection. I'm going to go under both of them just to make a strong connection. Go under these two loops and these two loops. And then just continue all the way down. I thought to leave this uh, yarn here and just use it to sew, but I forgot that you're going to be short one on this side. So then find your next three, find your next three here, keep it equal as much as you can. And since you have such a long piece because you're doing a, you're doing a long afghan, what I did when sewing mine is I got several stitch markers and I would go down my afghan and try to make sure that the ends were equal like this and then I would equal down like to here and then I would mark it. I'd go into the beginning of this three and this three. Then you use a marker, pull through both those stitches and then pull through that and you'll make kind of like a knot here. Then you go down a little bit more down your afghan then find another equal one, making sure that it's straight from this point to this point. Obviously mine isn't so much because it's not equal. Then you get your next stitch marker, pull through both those, leaving a loop on this side. Then you pull the tail through that loop. Then you pull it to tighten it and it will hold that piece together. So you can use several pieces to make sure that your strip stays straight all the way down. And you only want to single crochet, keep your single crocheting all the way down, keeping it straight until you get to the last three on this side. So this will be your last stitch here. And then you'll find the last of this three on this side right before the corner. And that'll be your last stitch here. You do not want to sew over these end ones. So this is where you'll stop and you'll cut your yarn and then you'll have two pieces that will be sewn together from here to here. And I'll show you again on my afghan here just to refresh your memory. If I can get it going on the right side here. There. See, this is what I did and I did it only to that corner piece I didn't do these and see how mine kind of like folds a little bit here um, if yours is doing the same thing you can go ahead and add more uh, stitches here and make it lay flatter or even to the point add more stitches where it'll become ruffled if you want it's up to you I just lost my above light ran out of battery sorry about that but anyway I'm done with the tutorial so that is how you're gonna make the a mile a minute Celtic weave afghan and I hope that this is helpful and like I said I have a tutorial on the inner under weave stitch if you need some extra help with that and also I have uh, pictures on the pattern that can help you out so that's it thank you so much for watching don't forget uh, to check me out on Facebook because uh, I share patterns not just my own I share links to free patterns there and also uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and please don't forget to share my videos. It helps me out so much. 
Thank you so much for watching.